presented by Southwest Airlines, proud sponsor of the NFL and official airline of Super Bowl 37. Packers taking the field there at Lambeau Field. They lead the league in takeaways, 39, the Packers on the season. The Bills are worst in the league. In fact, nine of their 14 games, they did not even force a turnover. Only 14 on the entire season. That has been the story for the Bills. They are still mathematically alive, though. Yeah, everybody's today. still mathematically alive, but I just had a thought. Hey, you know how it was Emmett Smith's last time in Dallas, possible yesterday? Right. This could be your last time on our set. It won't. Oh, you talking about hitting the wall. What about the, the wall that uh, the, the, the quarterback <laughs> hit, man? Buffalo's quarterback. The Bledsoe didn't what about that well. wall? He did hit a lot of walls. That's why I don't and think he And he cannot turn the, the ball over against the Packers today. They're going to take Why did you have such a smile on your face when you reported that? <laughs> I mean, got come on, man. Silver on today, man. <laughs> this is the last time we're going to see you. We love hey. it, man. This we is love a it. serious it's issue, guys. Merry, Merry Christmas, guys. Merry, Merry Christmas trip. to all of you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. Those of you with a 4 o'clock game will be back in just a moment. For everyone else, it's game time on the NFL today. Enjoy it all right here on CBS. It is cold in Green Bay, Wisconsin, for the Buffalo Bills and the Green Bay Packers. With their win last night, Philadelphia with the best record in the NFL. Green Bay and Tampa Bay will try to match that. The Bucks play tomorrow night against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Happy holidays, everyone, with Randy Cross. Kevin Harlan, great to have you with us. What is Green Bay playing for today? Well, you saw that graphic. It's all about home field advantage for two really good reasons. Number one, Green Bay as a team has never lost a home playoff game. And number two, more importantly, Brett Favre as a quarterback here at Lambeau Field has never lost a playoff game. All right, for the Buffalo Bills, still very much alive in the AFC playoff picture. Well, two things they have to do. One, they got to start doing something. And number two, they got to keep doing something. Number one, Drew Bledsoe has got to start throwing the ball well again. And number two, Travis Henry, number 20, the running back that's carried this team the last month or so, has got to keep drilling that ball on the ground in order for this team to win two games and get a chance at the playoffs. We'll return to Green Bay after this message from your local station as you're watching the NFL on CBS. Have any idea where that medicine you're taking came from? That it may even be a counterfeit. Curious? Try watching 60 Minutes tonight. The search is on. Don't miss the Star Search premiere, CBS Wednesday, January 8th. Introducing all new America Online 8.0. We listened to you and designed AOL 8.0 with hundreds of exciting new features. Welcome. New AOL email sort gets you to important mail faster. New AOL Call Alert lets you be online and never miss important phone calls. Choose a welcome screen tailored to your interests. There are hundreds of new features to easily connect you to the people and things you care about most. New America Online 8.0. Call 1-800-4-ONLINE or get a free startup disk at these locations. Welcome back to NFL Sunday Ticket. I'm Spencer Tillman here to help you get in the holiday mood with an early gift of 11 exciting games, most carrying playoff significance in this crucial week 16 of NFL 2002. Let's start by taking a look at the baffling AFC race. Now, no team has clinched a spot yet, but that all could change today. Miami's loss to the Vikings on Saturday makes it possible for the Raiders and the Colts to secure at least a wild card berth with a win. If and only if the Colts lose to the Giants, that opens the door for the Titans to clinch the AFC South title with a win over the Jaguars. Now, over in the NFC, the Eagles, Packers, and Niners, and Bucks are all in. The Saints and the Falcons can clinch the two wild card spots if they win today and the Giants lose. What a way to finish the season that's been loaded with interesting plot lines, everyone. What do you think will be remembered as the biggest storyline of the 2002 season? Michael Vick's rise to stardom, Rich Gannon's record-setting numbers. Don't forget now, Emma Smith became the all-time rushing king just a few weeks ago. Email me, spencer at nfl.com, with your choice. And if I share your thoughts on the air, we'll send you an NFL t-shirt absolutely free of charge. All right, everyone, eight games are ready to kick off just for you now. I'll see you later here on NFL Sunday Ticket. CBS Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. Lambeau Field. 
Pro Football's most distinguished address, where legends have made NFL history. Indelible moments that are the fabric of the Green Bay mystique. And this generation's heroes have made their mark. Today, the Packers, destined for the playoffs, battle Drew Bledsoe and the Bills, who are clinging to faint playoff hopes. The Bills and Packers, next. Buffalo Bills have won two of their last three. The Green Bay Packers have won three consecutive games. Season's greetings from Lambeau in what might be the best scene in all the NFL. Our kickoff is next. Subway presents Fresh Starts. A salute to this season's surprises. Subway, eat fresh. Brian Billick's Ravens were supposed to be rebuilding this year, but Baltimore has remained in the playoff chase with talented young players. On offense, Todd Heap leads all AFC tight ends in receiving. While on defense, rookie Ed Reed is second in the NFL with five interceptions. If the Ravens win their final two, they'll have a shot at the postseason. I'll have your steak and cheese with some of that Southwest sauce. Two classic BMTs and put sweet onion sauce on hers. She's so sweet. I could just have a roast beef with Dijon horseradish. Subway club with hot peppers? Because we like it hot. At Subway, every sandwich is fresh made just the way you want. With your choice of delicious meats, toppings, sauces, all on fresh baked breads. It can be complicated. Just, um, give me what they're having. Or simple. It's up to you. Subway, eat fresh! You see the wind whipping around Green Bay this afternoon, 27 degrees, and uh, enduring those conditions down on the sideline are Beasley Reese. All right, thanks a lot, Kevin. Now, the Buffalo Bills need turnovers to be successful today, something they haven't done well all year long. Now, to get, to, to get an interception, you got to catch a ball from Brett Favre. You know he throws it at high velocities. So to get ready, the Buffalo defenders have been catching balls all week from a machine called the Jugs machine. It sends balls at very high velocities. We'll see if they can catch back up there how can he even talk down there as cold as it is Mike Hollis will kick it off JJ Moses back inside the 15 the Buffalo Bills the Green Bay Packers and welcome to Lambeau in Wisconsin with Moses and about the 18 yard line a nice tackle made downfield by reserve wide receiver Charles Johnson nine yard return now we're going to look at Brett Favre, the number three rated NFC quarterback coming into this afternoon. And he is starting his 172nd consecutive game. Notice the rookie free agent tackle Kevin Berry starting again today for Earl Dotson. And Amon Green remains one of the most effective rushers in the NFC. From just outside the 25 at the 26, Favre opens up in the gun, first and 10. Bobbles the snap from Winters, and outside he goes incomplete, looking for his fullback, William Henderson. It'll be second down and 10. Buffalo's defense comes in number 16 in the NFL today. On the line, ex-Tampa Bay Buck, Chidi Ahanatu. London Fletcher in the linebacking core leads this defense in tackles. He's an ex-St. Louis Ram. And Antoine Winfield, part of a young secondary, including rookie safety Coy Wire out of Stanford. Second down and 10, same 26 yard line for Green Bay. And Amon Green tries to take it inside. And he is held on to nicely after a gain of three by Pat Williams. Balls up to the 29 yard line. That sets up third down. Kevin, really, I think the most important factor in this game isn't really so much the cold, it's going to be the win. You saw how short that kickoff was by Buffalo and that was for a very good reason the wind is really whistling from left to right in this stadium Brett Favre and the Packers have it at their back right now and if you're going to throw and do business you better do it when you're going in this direction how about the Green Bay receivers against the corners of Buffalo now they don't go two three four deep very well for Buffalo some matchups to exploit third down and seven from the 29 
Frog gets a block from Green and fires a pass. Intercepted on the play. And kicked off by Kevin Thomas. And out of bounds he goes. And Brett Favre throws his 14th interception of the season. A 32-yard return, and Buffalo has it deep in Green Bay territory. Well, Favre's trying to force this ball to Donald Driver. He does not mind forcing it, but what a nice job jumping in front by Kevin Thomas. BZ Reese told you about the jugs gun and practicing catching balls, and Greg Williams told us yesterday, if there's one thing my defense has got to improve on these last two weeks, when they get a chance to catch a ball, they've got to catch it and not just knock it down. That's the kid's first career NFL interceptions. You take a look at Greg Williams. Kevin Thomas is a rookie out of UNLV, a sixth-round pick, first and goal at the nine for Drew Bledsoe. Travis Henry is devoured by the defensive line. Cladius Hunt was there, throwing him for a loss of four on the play. I'll march it back to about the 12-yard line. The Buffalo offense is number six in the National Football League, led by 30-year-old Drew Bledsoe, headed for his fourth Pro Bowl. And an offensive line, Jonas Jennings back at the left tackle. Eric Moulds, a Pro Bowl wide receiver, number seven in receptions in the league coming into today. After that loss, second down and goal at the 13 for Bloodson. Travis Henry tries to get outside. And a flag is thrown as he was brought down by Darren Sharper and a possible face mask on the play. Travis Henry is so powerful. Beasley Reese was talking to him yesterday about his bench press. 485 pounds. What a kind of a straight arm can a, can a little guy like that put on a defensive back or linebacker trying to tackle him. Kyle Diggs picks up the face mask penalty as you take a look at one of our veteran officials in the NFL, referee Tom White. Both teams coming off wins last week. Green Bay 2014 over San Francisco. Buffalo 2013 over San Diego to stay alive in the tough AFC playoff picture. Personal foul. Face mask. Number 59, defense, that'll be half the distance and a goal. First down. A little bit of this strength. Bang into the face. Right on Diggs. And I don't think Diggs ever got his face mask. I don't like that call at all. Mike Sherman's got every reason to be mad. If anybody had a hold of a face mask right there, it was Travis Henry. His first and goal at the six yard line for Bledsoe. Nice in motion on top of your screen. Bledsoe hit as he throws into the end zone. Nobody home. Incomplete. Molds was about five, six yards away. The Green Bay defense, number 11. Baja Bia Miller has 11 sacks this season, number five in the NFL. The linebackers led by Hardy Nickerson, first year with Green Bay, still effective in his 16th NFL season. In the secondary, Darren Sharper over the last two years plus, more interceptions than any defensive player in the NFL. The key so far for the Buffalo offense the last month has been they've been able to pressure Bledsoe and disrupt his throwing. Great example, last play. Second goal at the six, Travis Henry into the teeth of that Green Bay defense and Russell down. With Anderson jumping on top, Baja Biamilla is there after a two-yard gain. Another sellout here at Lambeau, as you might expect. The stadium being renovated in a almost $300 million facelift, which will make this truly the, uh, the, the one crowning jewel in the NFL in terms of stadium. It's going to be spectacular when finished, and right now they're about 75-80% complete. Third down, goal at the four. Larry centers in the backfield. Price is on the move. Four receivers deployed. And Bledsoe to the end zone. And intercepted by Sharper. On the deflection, he'll take it out and give some breathing space. And so each team has traded an interception. And it was deflected on the play by Antoine Edwards. And Bledsoe throws his 14th interception of the season you'd love to be able to lob this but into the wind you've got to fire it antoine edwards tips it green bay turns it around with sharper putting it back in buffalo's face
Karen Sharper is on the ground, just got his NFL leading seventh interception of the season. And that's not all he got, Kevin. He caught himself a helmet in his leg as he was returning that ball. He's easily outrunning his blocking and gets that helmet right into the side of his thigh. From the 14, first and 10, here's Amon Green. Nice block outside by Flanagan. And Green picks up four, brought down on the play by Fletcher, and he's up to the 17-yard line. You know, Marco Rivera this week made the Pro Bowl. First Packer offensive lineman since 1983, Larry McCarron. Does a lot of TV and radio work up here in the Green Bay market. And Mike Sherman announced all the Pro Bowlers and announced all the alternates and kind of thanked all their coaches. And then sort of as an afterthought at the end of the meeting, he goes, oh, by the way, Marco, you're going to the Pro Bowl, too. Seven years in the NFL, second down, long six. Come on, Green again. And they pull Flanagan from the tackle as the lead blocker. It's a gain of two, and he's up just past the 20-yard line. A host of bills right there, including Fletcher again at the middle linebacker. And the reason I bring up, bring up the deal with Marco Rivera and the, and the Pro Bowl running game is that's always been the ingredient that Green Bay has had. I, you know, I don't care if you go back to the old days like you saw in the open with Paul Horning and, and Taylor and whatnot. And then Dorsey Levins and company with Brett Favre in the mid middle 60s. Right now, it's going to be a big running game. This is what powers this team. It's not always the quarterback. It's running game and defense. Outside the 23rd down and four and five throws a dart. It's caught. Terry Glenn makes the grab. Thomas and Wire get him. A gain of nine on third down and four. And he's up to the 29-yard line for a first down. Of course, it doesn't hurt to have Brett Favre as your quarterback when he can throw the ball like that. <laughs> this guy has just got one of the, the special arms. You, you talk about all-around talents, and the word great is the most overused word in all of sports broadcasting, but Drew, Brett, Brett Favre truly has a great arm and is truly in the history of this game one of the great quarterbacks. Glenn with his 48th reception of the season, first down and 10, 29-yard line, the fake the green. Here comes a and two, and outside they go, incomplete. And a shove, and no yellow on the field. They were going for Glenn again, and now they say he caught it. One official had one view, another had another view, and they're saying he juggled it, but... I, I smell a conference. <laughs> well, I see one. I see a conference. The official right on the site. I mean, right on the site. That's a spectacular... Right there. He says Pass. no catch. Second down. It is a reception. It is second down and four to go. Greg Williams just threw out his red challenge yeah. flag. But do you use it now for a little six yard gain or do you wait and save it for something bigger down the road? I, there's something to be said for using it in this, this situation with Green Bay's going with the win. And he's going to have the advantage of throwing like that. Yeah, I think normally, no, you wouldn't use it in this situation. But if you're Buffalo, you're looking for momentum. You're looking for a reason to get excited and a reason Buffalo to stay in this game. The ruling on the field that this was Terry Glenn, pass. ball against the leg. No, that wasn't a catch. Good, that'll be a good review by Greg Williams. He won't lose the time out there. What kind of season has Terry Glenn had in his first year in Green Bay? Fairly inconspicuous. Yeah. You know, for all the problems that Terry Glenn had up in New England and the controversial relationships with Bill Parcells and Pete Carroll and the Kraft family being very understanding in a lot of those cases in New England. He came here to Green Bay, and he's fit in and been a good citizen for Mike Sherman in this organization. And yeah, I can see why. If you can't fit into this community and this organization, um, you'd have to have a serious problem. And Terry Glenn has had absolutely no problem fitting in. And once again, it's Terry Glenn on the sideline. It is possession. Does he have it at any time here before his feet go out of bounds? He doesn't truly have that ball until he gets on the ground, so this is going to be a no-catch. One of the great stories when Glenn was first signed by Green Bay after Mike Sherman had spent many hours with him at his home to, to see, you know, what he thought, his own personal interview, Brett Favre took him out golfing. And uh, Brett said, I, I want to get you on the same page as this organization. I've been here 11, 12 years. And that was one of the things that opened up the door for Glenn and talking about the ease with which he has melted into the franchise. Hey, Brett Favre also golfs when it's still like in the low 40s. <laughs> I'm not sure if Terry Glenn quite bought into that part of the program. <laughs> well, and there's the guy that just intercepted the pass of Drew Bloodsoe. And he is being taken, as you can see, off the field for further tests inside the back of the play, 
The receiver is in the process of catching the ball with one foot down. As he's crossing the sideline, the ball is moving. The second foot comes down, out of bounds, inbounds. It's an incomplete pass. It's second down. And Buffalo is not charged a timeout. And to the sideline and Beasley Reese. All right, thanks a lot, guys. You just saw one of the best safeties in the league, Darren Shopper, being taken in. Uh, the PR team tells me it's a sprained right knee. Uh, his return is doubtful. He will get x-rays and further examination in the locker room. Back to you. Thank you, Beasley. Second down and 10. They move it back to the 29-yard line with Green in the backfield. The fake end around the driver, and Green is taken down by Ahana, too. Gain of four and up to the 33. Everybody in the league nowadays runs these fake reverses. And I think as a viewer at home, I, I know when I watch football sometimes and that happens, I kind of say, why in the heck do you do that all the time? And really, it's, it's fairly simple. You have so much inexperience nowadays on defenses, and they're playing very basic attack-oriented defenses. If they're going to attack something like a reverse action like that, they're going to be out of possession. They're trying to set him up for a pass later in this quarter or later in this half. 33-yard line, third and six. They dump it off, dropped by Amon Green, incomplete. Fourth down, Green Bay's got a punt. Seems like John Gruden is the guy who kind of started that here in the last couple of years when he was coaching Oakland with uh, with either Rice or Brown coming on that end around fake. Lots of stuff. And actually, Kevin Gilbride's in the sideline for the Buffalo Bills, the offensive coordinator. Ran the run and shoot for years, and I think a lot of the guys like him and Mouse Davis and June Jones are responsible for a lot of the passing game. Right now, there are people who are using this league when people said you were crazy for running three, four, five wides. Bidwell to punt. Two safeties back. There goes a flag. Two safeties back for the Buffalo Bills, and you can see it flutter. Charlie Rogers at the 25-yard line for Buffalo, and then brought down by Tyrone Davis, a reserve tight end, a 42-yard punt. Seven yard return, flag is at the 32. And it's on Buffalo, as you can see. It was fourth and six. Offside, number 51, defense. Deshaun no. Polk. The penalty is declined. Be a first down for Buffalo. Timeout. Timeout taken. Each quarterback, Favre and Bledsoe, have thrown interceptions in a scoreless first quarter. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Bud Light. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Message from America. Visit Circuit City today to record your message. And by Hummer. Check out the new H2 at Hummer.com. Hummer, like nothing else. Have you done all your Christmas shopping so far? It's too early. <laughs> don't want don't to stress out too early. After the Green Bay punt, 32-yard line for Bledsoe, first and 10. And it goes to Henry. Brought down by Tyrone Williams. Nate Wayne was over there as well. Gain of two on the play, and he's up to the 34. We'll follow the playoff race through the end of the season with our exclusive projected seeds and brackets on all the playoff scenarios. Just click on the playoff race at CBSSportsLine.com on AOL keyword CBS Sportsline. Well, the inside running game is now officially closed if you're a Buffalo Bill <laughs> running back. Travis Henry knows that. He looks up and sees big 93. Gilbert Brown in there. Inside running is out of the question. At the 34, second down and eight. Rutso with time. And undershoots his receiver, Peerless Price, who's had a career year. It'll now be third down and eight. I, I, I'm trying to look at the wind and which way it's going. I do know, though, we're going to go to New York right now with Jim Nance for this update. All right, guys, got a little update here on Tennessee and Jacksonville. The Titans are in with Eddie George from four yards out. And Tennessee, 7 nothing here down in Jacksonville. Let's go back to you. Jaguars have had a tough go in the regular season. Only 1-9, Jim, in December and January games against teams with winning records. And the Titans take a 9-5 and five record into that game today. Third down and eight from the 34 for Bledsoe from the gun. The Trey Teague snap and Bledsoe fires to the side where it's caught 
by the rookie out of LSU, Josh Reed, a second-round pick, a gain of 17 on third down and eight, and he's in the Green Bay Packer territory at the 49. And when you're playing this Buffalo offense, there's two players that can kind of get below the radar on you. It's Josh Reed and it's tight end Jay Reimersma. Because Bledsoe has got peerless price. He has Eric Molds. He has Travis Henry running the ball. And Blue Drew Bledsoe also has this rifle of an arm where he can lay the ball out there. And despite the cold, despite the conditions, he has receivers that will catch the ball with their hands and not trap it against their body. Larry centers in the backfield now with Henry. First down and 10 from the Panther 49. It is the aforementioned centers who tries to burrow his way for a couple to about the Green Bay 47 with the gain of two on the play at the bottom of the pile. Cletius Hunt, second down. And right next to Cletius is Gilbert Brown. And you look at Cletius Hunt and, and Gilbert in there, and you've got a, a block. You know, despite the fact that there's two defensive tackles, two guards in a center, so the offense has the advantage, right? There's three offensive players, and there's two defensive players. Well, those guys play the responsibility and their gaps so well, and they eat up blockers so well, the Packer linebackers so run very, very freely to the ball. Second down eight, Philip Crosby in the game, 47 of Green Bay after the Packer okay, punt. Both away. quarterbacks have thrown interceptions. It looks like Bledsoe's changing at the line. And he sends his running back up the middle where nothing is there. Niall Diggs makes a stop and a fumble on the play, and the Packers have gotten it. It was a fumble in Cletius Hunt at the bottom of that pile. Kevin, guess what they were trying to do? Remember those three offensive guys and those two defensive guys? And let's just run inside. They tried to run inside. The meat shop inside was closed. And they were happy to take that pick stick. Travis Henry just fumbled. The Bills have had two turnovers, both in Green Bay territory. Packers take over at the Buffalo 49, first and 10. And Amon Green blocked by Henderson and swarmed under. Fletcher was right there. They jump on him at the 47. It's a gain of two. Beasley Reese on the sideline. All right, thanks a lot, guys. If you can see the slickness on this football, these are new balls they play with. You're not allowed by new rules to scuff them up or doctor them. I talked to both quarterbacks, and these are big-handed quarterbacks, and they still said they don't like it. It causes a lot of problems. We've seen two interceptions and a fumble, and this slick ball in 10-degree windshield has a lot to do with it. Back to you. And Beasley, you've got pretty big hands, too, but if you tried to squeeze that thing, it would squirt right out of your hands, just like it did to Travis Henry. Second, Nate Shovel bearing down on Favre. He dumps it off, as he always does. Due to the tight end, Tyrone Davis, with his eighth reception of the year. Fletcher is over there with the stop. It's a gain of one to the Buffalo 46. You know, when you do a Green Bay Packer game and you're and you're watching this guy play quarterback, it's kind of like watching a big fight. You know, you like to see boxers and you like to see the lightweight guys and they punch so well. Brett Favre as a quarterback is a heavyweight because Brett Favre has got the big right hand. Brett, Brett Favre can throw the bomb and you watch him because any second he can throw the ball 50, 60, 65 yards down the field for a big score. Here's the king. That's what the players called him yesterday, the three-time MVP. Third down and seven at the Buffalo 46. Shotgun snap from Winners. Good time for Fawn. Across the middle, floats it over for his fullback. Henderson incomplete, covered by Eddie Robinson. No flag on the play. Green Bay has got a punt, and they cannot cash in at midfield. Oh, there goes a flag. Nope. All right, they took it off the board. Must have been a, po a Packer brat. Must have been, yeah. Well, <laughs> a anyway. Brat, a brat rapper. <laughs> so there is no flag on the play, and Green Bay will punt for the second time. They can't cash in on the fumble by Travis Henry. Exactly the kind of game both coaches thought they'd have. Low scoring, field position game. Bidwell's punt. Rodgers in it, letting it bounce, and dig its way down to the five. Ferguson knocks it down right there. 41-yard punt, well placed at the Buffalo Five. When we come back. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by T-Mobile. Get more minutes, more features, more service. And by the United States Postal Service. Three total turnovers in this game, no points. 
off any of those turnovers as you see St. Nick enjoying a game. He's pretty close to the North Pole being here in Green Bay. Sure as heck feels like it. Yeah. <laughs> with Randy Cross and Beasley Reese, Kevin Harlan. Packers just punted after they couldn't do anything with the previous Buffalo fumble. So from the six yard line and a good Bidwell punt. so back there. First down and 10 yards to go. That's Peerless Price, 81. Bledsoe back at crumbling, and he goes to Price at the 11-yard line, brought down on the play by Diggs, a gain of five, second and five coming up. You know, Kevin, how often do you play a game where it's important to both teams? It's what you consider a big game, and to start off, both teams are playing kind of shaky. You get an interception to start, then they trade back another interception. Niall Diggs strips that ball from Travis Henry, another mistake. But usually the games that start like that and start kind of sloppy end pretty wide. Gilbert Brown back in, in the middle there for Green Bay. Second down and five. Henry and Crosby in the eye from the 11. Travis Henry, who has fumbled more than any running back in the NFL this year. The fumble moments ago is ninth of the season. He picks up six yards right there. Let's go to New York and Jim Nance. All right, Kevin, Mark Bowrichter starting for Johnny Morton, deactivated today. Hauls in this pass from Trent Green. It's his 14th catch of the season. Seven of the 14 catches going for touchdowns. Seven nothing Kansas City. San Diego is driving, though, right back. Let's go to you. All right, Jim, remember the Chiefs lead the NFL in points scored over 440 points this season. They get a quick seven right there. First and ten. That six-yard gain by Henry carves out a first down. Up to 17. Henry on the pitch, cross beyond the block, and a nice run outside. The tackle is made by Diggs once again. Hardy Nickerson helped out. Gain of about two or three on the play. Looked like it might open up for Moles up to the 19 yard line. Now, that was a big play kind of hit right on Travis Henry. How about Eric Moles and McKenzie right here working? You think they're kind of nonchalant and this game doesn't really matter? <laughs> Yeah, y'all love it. Eventually, somebody throws their hands up in the air and goes, how long are you going to let him do that? Of course, he just had to get his hands off of McKenzie's face to make that motion. But. Second along, seven shy of the 24. Drew Bledsoe in the Buffalo offense. Bledsoe. Here comes Nickerson. And there he goes, deep downfield for Moles, and it hits Tyrell Williams in the back, incomplete. At about the Packer 40-yard line. If you were looking this at this from one of those nice end zone seats, you would see it move sideways. <laughs> you know, initially Eric Moulds thought that ball was coming down to him. See, watch the—I mean, the ball is just moving to Eric Moulds's left the whole time. The last 20 yards, it's in that air, and the, the, the wind is knocking it down. You can't throw the ball deep and go in this direction for the Buffalo Bills. Rob so is two of six. He has thrown a pick deep in Green Bay territory. Back in the end zone, he threw it. Third down, long seven. Inside the Buffalo 20. Up the middle they come. That ball floats incomplete. There goes a flag. He was looking for Moles. And they had uh, Jamal Reynolds coming up the middle in Bledsoe's face. Tyrone Williams was guarding on the side. I, I saw the contact. It was hard to tell who was holding and grabbing who. But usually the defensive player ends up in the short end of that stick. Ty Williams did have a pretty good hold of Eric Moulds' chest, though. They're still meeting. The officials are at about the 29-yard line. Packers are contending and threw it away. Number 37 defense. The flag was adjusted because the wind blew it. It's a first down. Not real popular here at Lambeau Field, but that was a good call. Watch Williams and 37. Eric Molds right there. He's got him around the stomach, around the jersey. Now, granted, Molds did kind of push off there at the end. The question Green Bay coaches probably have is, will that ball ever even close to being catchable? I think that is the point. First and 10, 31-yard line. Some breathing space for Bledsoe. Henry in the backfield. Good time. Outside he goes. It's caught by his tight end, 
That's Jay Reimersma. It's a gain of 11. Reimersma, a couple years ago, in fact, the last time these two teams played, caught two touchdowns against the Packers. That's why I mentioned him as kind of the below the radar. One of those guys, he and Josh Reed, because you're so worried about the other tools, you forget about a guy like Reimersma, who's always there as the sort of relief valve for Drew Bledsoe. But, you know, if this drive was to end right here, short of the 50-yard line, it's immediately a big success for the Buffalo Bills in a game like this. We'll keep reiterating the weather, the wind, and the fact that it's a field position game. 42-yard line, first and 10 for Bledsoe. And Travis Henry trying to find some kind of niche. Nate Wayne met him first and brought down by Nickerson and Joe Walker. Gain of four. And he's up to the 46. The CYCBS Monday is America's best night of television, starting with the King of Queens and followed by Yes, Dear. Everybody loves Raymond and still standing. Then don't miss TV's number one new show, CSI Miami, plus the late show with David Letterman. After your local news, it's Monday here on CBS, America's most watched network. Kevin, when you're watching Travis Henry, watch where he first gets hit, then watch where he eventually gets tackled. There's a difference between him getting hit and him getting tackled. Second and six from the 46 for Bledsoe. Whips it outside. Right by the tight end. Reimers again. Mike McKenzie tries to get him on the sideline. Yeah, a gain of nine on the play. So Reimers with uh, two nice catches on that side as they continue to move the chains. Well, you know, there's different kind of things you can call a mismatch and good matchups you like. And usually, I think when you watch a game, you think that mismatches have to do with speed. But sometimes mismatches can have to do with size, like Jay Reimers going against McKenzie, a cornerback. Because once he catches that ball, he has a distinct, almost like a center, going down the lane against a guard kind of a thing in basketball. He's got such a size advantage. Eighth play of the Buffalo Drive. They began on their six at the Green Bay 45. But so fires the pass incomplete. A little bit high for Eric Moulds. It'll be second down. If you're Greg Williams coming into this kind of environment, weather, fans, importance of the game, what, what, how do you... How do you plot your course? Well, you know, he's approached this whole thing in three phases. He says, number one, you've got to be careful of a real fast Green Bay start, and you have to guard against that. And safe to say, with a minute and 19 seconds to go in the first quarter, they've avoided the fast start by the Packers. You want to really avoid a big score at the end of the half, which Favre is so good at, and don't give them a late chance late in the game. And you have a chance to win if you can do all three of those. Second down and 10. Travis Henry, who has fumbled today, tries to dance outside. McKenzie got him first, and Diggs got him to finish him. Gain of three, and down to the 42-yard line of Green Bay. Here's how Buffalo, it's uh, weird and as wandering as it seems, can still make the playoffs. Did you say convoluted? <laughs> it's amazing. In week, in week 16, with two games left, it's still this complicated in the AFC. But Greg Williams was the first one to point out when he was with the Houston Oilers. You know, Pittsburgh had to have five people lose on Sunday and Monday night have the, the right team win and everything fell perfectly for them so it's hard to convince him a convoluted scenario is out of his favor you saw Bryant Westbrook in the secondary for Green Bay third and seven and Bledsoe going deep looking for Moles down the side incomplete they have thrown four times to Eric Moles the number seven receiver in the NFL and no reception so far it's fourth down and the Buffalo Bills, who looked like they were getting a little bit of momentum, have to punt it away. Well, if you're a receiver in this game for either one of these quarterbacks, you had better be very, very patient. Because no pass, no two passes will look the same. One is going to float, one is going to drive into the wind, one is going to move left, one is going to move right, one's going to come down short. And can't that one case right there, it drove into the wind, and Moles was slowing down for it to come up short. J.J. Moses awaits Brian Mormon's punt, high snap. And not that good looking punt. Landing at the 20. It's looking better. And now it rolls another 10 yards down to the 10. Brian Mormon, the number six punter in the NFL. That's what they call putting earrings on a pig. <laughs> good looking Never rolls far enough. <laughs> Have any idea where that medicine you're taking came from? That it may even be a counterfeit. Curious? Try watching 60 Minutes tonight. Monday, Dave's got Kelly Ripa and the Dallas Cowboys' Emmett Smith. Plus, music from Missy Elliott and Late Show Beat the Clock. This truly is your lucky day, then, isn't it? Monday. Brett Favre has thrown an interception. Buffalo has turned it over twice. Bledsoe threw an interception for Buffalo into 
the end zone picked off by Sharper. Not much going on here in the first quarter in Green Bay outside the 10 after the Buffalo punt. Far takes over first down and 10. And Amon Green blocked by Tony Carter and then Pat Williams. Oh, he's so quick for a guy who's so big makes the stop after a gain of six. Carter was leading the way in. What a great scene. Green Bay, Wisconsin at holiday time. It is cold. The Packers and Buffalo Bills with no score. That's the end of the first quarter. We'll be back to Green Bay after these messages. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Log on to NFL.com. Read why Phil Sim says parity might bring hope to many teams, but it adds to the health and heartache of a lot after week 17. NFL.com. Here's a handoff to Amon Green on second down and four. That's the first play of the second quarter. And it's a gain of three on the play. Randy Cross, Kevin Harlan, some thoughts on the first quarter. Well, Greg Williams wanted to prevent a fast Packers start. Well, you know, 14 plays, 35 yards, that's pretty much preventing that fast start. Only one first down. The problem is his offense is doing less. Is the wind doing what you thought it would do to the game? It's a field position, cold football game. The punters are having problems. The quarterbacks are having problems. The fans are having problems. The announcer, third, <laughs> third down to long one. Shy of the 20. And Green is close to a first down. Had to get beyond the 20. And looks like that's where they'll spot the ball. Let's see. It is after the 21. This team is still so young, yet Randy Green Bay is 11 and 3 amongst the best in the league record one. Well, you know, that's why I think when you look at coaches of the year, you have to look at Mike Sherman and Andy Reid in the NFC because they've done so much despite injuries, despite playing different people. You know, some of these guys are so young, they don't know any better. But a lot of it's good coaching. Carter remains in the backfield. First and 10 on Green. Stiff arms his way by Robinson. Past the 35 to the 37. Brought down by Robinson, 16-yard gallop for Amon Green, the NFC's number four rusher. And if you're going to have some guys that don't know any better, it's not always bad to surround them with guys like Brett Favre and Amon Green. Amon Green showing that uh, he's got his own little straight arm there. Travis Henry's not the only one in this game with that action in the back end of Nebraska. Has always run with power, and curiously, he also early in his career had a real fumbling problem. Tony Fisher is in the app with Holmgren in Seattle. On the 36, first and 10, the fake to Fisher. Barr dumps it off to the rookie free agent out of Notre Dame, and then he is brought down by Fletcher and Williams. And no gain on the play. Second down. You know, when Brett Favre throws the football, sometimes it kind of reminds me of Greg Maddox. I live in Atlanta, so I get a chance to watch Greg Maddox throw the ball a lot. And the only difference is Maddox doesn't have the heater like Brett Favre has, but he can throw it at so many different velocities and so many different angles, and he can do so many different things with the football. He's, he's truly kind of a magician. With they, they say he throws harder in practice than he does in the games. Yeah, he's just trying to he's just trying to be a, a smart aleck, I think, in practice, make his point, and put a few dots on people's chests. Driver has not caught a pass yet. Fisher in the backfield. And a pass caught by Donald Driver. Breaking one tackle after another, and then Chidi Ahanitu brings him down. A 14-yard pickup, a first-down catch-and-run to the Buffalo 49. But one thing he also does in practice is he expects his receivers to run exactly the same routes in the practices that they will in the games. He and Driver and Glenn sit in the back of the meeting, room, meeting rooms, and Brett tells his receivers, look, great route. I love the way you, you ran that. Run it in the game. I'll get you the ball. Donald Driver ran the exact same route. I guarantee you this week in practice, Brett Favre gave him the ball in the game the exact same way he did in practice. Matt Green back in, first and ten. Fake handoffs, and outside they go Terry Grant. Smart out beautifully on the play by Aaron Schobel, then finished off on the side by Pearson Prelo, a loss of two, and moved the ball back to about the Green Bay 49. Well, tonight on CBS, Emmy winners Patricia Heaton and Peter Falk star in a magical holiday movie for the whole family. Don't miss A Town Without Christmas tonight on CBS, America's Most Watch Network. With Randy Cross and Beasley Reese, Kevin Harlan, historic Lambeau in Green Bay, where it is cold and windy. Second down and 12. Packers at their 49. 
nice snap from Winters. Pulled down by five. Rush comes on and down he goes. And a flag is thrown on the play. Aaron Schobel is the one to trip him up and knock him down. There he is. His brother plays in the NFL as well. He went around Flanagan on that left tackle, the former starting center for Green yeah, Bay. The, now. the second nice play in a row by Aaron Schobel. Just a quick, aggressive move on that fake reverse kind of dump off to Terry. Glanny made a nice play. And right there on that play, a very, very nice, quick, instinctive play. Holding number 93, defense. That's a five-yard penalty. That's a first down. That's Pat Williams. Who's had a nice season. Taking the place of Ted Washington, who vacated that position a couple years ago to Chicago. You don't see this very often. There's Pat Williams in the middle. Watch him grab Amon Green coming through the backfield and just throw him to the ground. Saw that in the Super Bowl a couple years. Called it a couple years ago in that Baltimore-New York Giants game. Called against, I think, Keith Hamilton in that Super Bowl. You don't very, very rarely, very rarely see that called. 46-yard line, first and 10. Amon Green. Stutter steps a part of block and outside it goes and brought down by Nate Clemens for no gain. Second down and ten. That was almost a really good move by Amon Green. Because Clemens just did get his feet because he went for that first kind of juke inside fake, but stayed with him long enough. And if there's another thing that I think this defense for Buffalo really needs to concentrate on and do much better, especially against Green Bay, is tackle. Not only catch the interceptions they can get to, they gotta tackle these Green Bay Packers skill, skill players. Second down and 10. Five has thrown a pick. Bledsoe has thrown an interception as well. Buffalo has also fumbled. Both turnovers for Buffalo in Green Bay territory. Second and 10. Here comes Robinson. There goes five. Fires downfield incomplete. Looking for the leaping Robert Ferguson. Incomplete the coverage on the play by Antoine Winfield. He's out of Ohio State. It'll be third and 10. Tell you one thing that this Buffalo Bills team absolutely has is two corners and Clements and Winfield that can man on man match up with anybody Green Bay has. The problem they have is when they get to their third and fourth, you know, nickel and dime backs matching up with the Green Bay receivers inside. What, what can defensive backs like Winfield tell about the splits of, say, the Green Bay receivers today? They'll tell them the routes. You watch enough tape, especially end zone tapes, it'll tell you when they line up inside near the hash marks, they're more liable to run outs. Outside the hash marks and numbers, they're not gonna run in routes. Third and ten for the 46. A block by Barry. Time for four, but from the blind side, Shogel brings him down. That's his eighth sack of the season. The first sack on Farm and Green Bay has got a punt. And Aaron Shogel had a nice little defensive series for the Buffalo Bills. And we're seeing a lot of defensive ends in the league now that are kind of in this Shogel size range. Rage, you know, Kabir Bajabia Mila on the other side. Aaron, you know, Taylor, Jason Taylor with the Miami Dolphins. John Just Abraham. John Abraham coming in from the left. They're guys that have high motors, are not necessarily huge football players, but they're real challenges for big, heavy offensive tackles. Bidwell's third consecutive punt for Green Bay. And Clemens will let it bounce in front of him, and then there's the roll you see to about the 10. Ferguson taps it. That's a 39-yard, well-placed punt by Josh Bidwell and a scoreless first half from Lambeau. Championship on CBS. A lot of turnovers, a lot of punts, and no scoring in this game. That is the frozen tundra license plate up here in Green Bay, although the field is not frozen. It's actually a pretty good position. Everything frozen on the tundras above it. Yes. Not <laughs> they got heaters, coils, water pipes underneath this field to keep it as good as it is. You know, so often you think coaches are being paranoid when they tell you stuff about a game. Oh, these guys are tough. It's going to be field position. It's going to be smash mouth football. Both guys told us the same thing. They're absolutely right so far. From the 10, first and 10 after the Green Bay punt. Third straight back to punt. That's all to Travis Henry. He's fumbled today. Bouncing off one defender after another. Edwards trying to get him down and finally does. It's an help from Mike McKenzie. And an avalanche of Packer players bring him down. Will be up 
to about the nine with no game will be second down and ten. Remember what I told you a little while ago about seeing where Travis Henry's hit and where he's tackled and the difference up until that last tidal wave hit him. There was a chance he could get away from Antoine Edwards. Not bad push inside, but watch when he gets in this area. That's one hit right there by Edwards. Edwards needs help. McKenzie's going to give him some help. They still need help. They need two more guys, and he still doesn't go down until 10 yards later. Well, talk about some strength. What'd you say that kid benched? 485 pounds. <laughs> That's ironically what I benched one time once in my life. And I play a little different position. Yes, <laughs> second down and 10 from the 10. Fake by Plug, so buys him tons of time. Winds up and goes downfield for Price, incomplete. Tailed on the play by McKenzie and Bowen. Third down, coming up. And, and Peerless Price has really been sort of the missing part of the puzzle for Buffalo. We've seen those great matchups between Molds and McKenzie in the physical play. The fake kind of tended to, to bring up the linebackers, Hardy Nickerson of the Green Bay Packers. Just Drew Bledsoe was off with the ball, trying to drop it in that hole behind the, between the corner and the safety. Bledsoe is only two of nine going to his wide receivers this afternoon. Remember last week, what, 11 of, 11 of 31 for 107 yards? That's why I said in the open, he's got to start throwing the ball much better, much more effectively for this team to have the chance to win these two games. Third and 10. Our job being Miller was coming around the side on Jonas Jennings. It was deflected. It is an incomplete pass. But nonetheless, of the top sack men in the NFL putting pressure on Bledsoe, and that's going to force a Buffalo punt. You know, Bajah Biamila can come from anywhere. Right here, he's on the bottom part of the screen. I'm sorry, he's top of the screen right there working against Jonas Jennings. See the edge he gets on Jennings? Bledsoe's arm is coming forward, and the ball is deflected. Nice job by Tom White back there. But Jonas Jennings has been slowed a little with a groin, and he's given up that edge, and that's one of the quickest defensive ends in the game. This is the first three and out for the Buffalo Bills. Pressure is coming from Fisher. J.J. Moses deep back. And on a bounce, he is nailed. Coming through was Marcus Floyd. That is a 42-yard punt. Boy, they buried him. We've got a timeout. This is Reuben Brown of the Buffalo Bills. Reuben helps the United Way build stronger communities by participating in after-school recreational outings that help kids succeed. Ruben! Ruben! To all of his fans, Reuben's a hero. Ruben! 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 To some of his fans, Reuben's a hero. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Acura and the 260 horsepower TL Type S. Duracell, trusted everywhere. And by American Express, make life rewarding. Festive Green Bay and our holiday wishes to you and your family from all of us at CBS. Randy Cross, Beasley Reese, I'm Kevin Harlan. It's another possession for the Packers. They've got it first and 10. Pretty good field position at the 48. They've got Amon Green in the backfield and far right to work. Knocked away beautifully. Great diving coverage by Nate Clemens. Second down and 10. Monday on the Late Show, Dave welcomes Dallas Cowboys star running back Emmett Smith plus Kelly Ripa and music star Missy Elliott. This is misdemeanor. I don't even know how I know that. It's all your making like a teenage two uh, I was gonna say, teenage I know daughters. Why. <laughs> it's all your Monday on CBS. <laughs> you walk in the room once in a while. I know. I go, what is that noise? <laughs> Turn that off. Second down and ten. <laughs> it's Amon Green. Brought down on the play by Grant Irons. Ryan Denny, gain of three, and he's in the Buffalo Bill territory at the 49. Green Bay has had a very un-Green Bay-like beginning to this game on offense. Well, Mike Sherman and Greg Williams both pointed out, though, how important one word was going to be for both teams. Patience. And you have to be patient when you start out interception, punt, punt, punt. Especially when you're an offensive coach. I mean, an old old line coach like Mike Sherman that's coached everything. He's coached receivers, quarterbacks, 
But both coaches and their football team will have to be very patient. And when they get a break and get a chance, take advantage. Third and seven from the Buffalo 49. Five hit by Newman, throws a pass, and it's caught by Driver. Trailed by Clemens. First down, Green Bay, gain of 20 to the Buffalo Bill, 29. Well, part of being patient is being very good with your technique. And when you're a defensive back, having good technique is not only just being able to get your arm in front and strip the ball, it's if you get the arm in front and try to strip the ball and the receiver catches the ball, then you've got to tackle him. Well, as you see right here, Antonio Winfield gets the strip part almost, but the tackle part gets away. But the tackle part does not get away from Nate Clements. Great hit. 29 yard line, first and 10. Far. Here comes Denny and Favre unloads to the end zone and Ferguson caught out of bounds. Stepped out of bounds, incomplete. But that was a spectacular catch. And you can see, you can see it's a good, good call by our officials. It's in the wide area, right in the back of the end zone. See those divots right there? That's right where he came down. And the officials were both on either side. Watch his feet. I mean, wonderful catch. And, you know, you can talk about all you want. See, they're out of bounds. You can talk about the catch all you want, but what other quarterback in the NFL running that hard to his left can throw that far down the field whose name isn't Michael Vick, who happens right. to be left-handed? <laughs> Second and 10, 29. Pitch out to Amon Green. Good block by Davis. Good block by Revere. And then finally Fletcher and Denny bring him down after a gain of four to the 25. And let's go to our studios in New York and Jim Nance. All right, Kevin, we're inside four minutes to play first half, and Eddie George has scored for the second time today, giving the Titans a 14-3 lead. They actually recovered an onside kick, but missed on a Nedney field goal try. 14-3, Tennessee, back to you. Tennessee comes in 9-5, and five, Randy. There's another coach doing a heck of a job, Jeff Fisher in Tennessee, because Tennessee is a team people are ignoring. And anybody who plays them in the playoffs better not ignore them because they're going to the playoffs. It's third and six outside the That's Buffalo 25. Come on, Green. Jetting down the middle. And then tripped up by Fletcher and brought down. Then he picks up eight yards. A slashing eight yards on third and six and a first down for Green Bay. One of the things that makes a team like Tennessee so powerful is their strength and their ba basic aggress aggressive nature. And Green Bay right now has got to get back to that basic aggressive nature like Eddie George pounding the ball for Tennessee. Well, Green has got to pound the ball for Green Bay. Try to be, make the difference, a physical difference between these two teams. First and 10, Amon Green has got 56 yards. He'll stay there, brought down by Schobel. On the line, Justin Bannon. Gain of a couple on the play. Second down and eight yards to go. Well, when he rushes for 100 yards or more, that's Green. His team, whether it was Seattle or Green Bay, 14 and 0. And he's now at 58. Second and eight. Second down and eight. Off the Buffalo Bills, 15 yard line. Fisher in the game, and he gets the fake from far. Right through the fingertips and incomplete. Bubba Franks, first time he has gone to him. That ball had some serious gas on it. Third and eight. Well, also, I'll repeat myself here, if you'll excuse me for a second. Look at Brett Favre going in this direction and throwing in this direction and throwing the ball so hard. Bubba Franks, you know, that's one of those passes. You go to put your hand up, you're not really sure if you even should because you're not necessarily going to. All you're going to do is stop it and break something in your hand if it hits it. I chatted. Packers on this drive have converted third and six and third and seven. Franks is out. Favre with a third and eight. At the Bills, 15. Tony Fisher. Boy, Buffalo read it well. Aaron Schobel there once again, two years out of TCU. And the Buffalo defense does their job holding Green Bay out of the end zone, relegating the Packers to a three-point try. Yeah, I talked about Tennessee and, and Jeff Fisher. Greg Williams came from there, and there's Aaron Schobel, 94. And this whole defense sort of playing like that Greg Williams defense did at Tennessee, being very physical. Right there in that matchup, the difference wasn't Green Bay being more physical. It was the Buffalo defense having the physical edge. Ryan Longwell has hit 15 consecutive field goals at Lambeau Field and make it 16 with that 33-yard boot. And the Packers are on the board. 
Mike Sherman and his Green Bay team leading the Buffalo Bills three to nothing. A wild one in the West. The Chiefs in a huge game against Oakland as the Raiders battle to be the best in the AFC West next Saturday on CBS. Well, it's maybe Randy not what they wanted, but it's what they got. A field goal, 33 yards by Longwell, and they lead for the first time today over the Buffalo Bills. It's almost like a touchdown lead yeah. in these conditions in this kind of football game. And remember what we mentioned earlier about last possession of the first half being one of Greg Williams's big keys for this game. They present, prevented the fast start by the Packers, but with 3.57 to go, his offense gets the ball here. They've got to keep it the rest of this half because they don't want to get Brett Favre back on the field with a chance to score. We saw the defense getting ready to get back on the field. The wind is blowing enough that it's got to be held, as you can see, and Longwell will boot it from the 30. This is Charlie Rogers at about the 15 for the Buffalo Bills. And finally doused by fullback William Henderson. It's a 19-yard return, and he's up to the 33-yard line. First half possession coming up for Buffalo now. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by the all-new Accord from Honda. It's more Accord than ever. And by National Security, starring Martin Lawrence in theaters January 17th. Just did an online poll here, the greatest Green Bay Packer ever. You see some outstanding names up there, but Brett Favre won in the landslide. Not a surprise, maybe. Drew Bledsoe is only 4 of 12. He's missed his last four throws. He's got it at the 34. It's first and 10. Pretty important drive for the Bills before halftime. Looking for his fourth option here, and it's incomplete. Trying to slide one out to his reserve tight end, Dave Moore. They'll be second down and 10. And just to sort of remind you how important this game is, not only for Buffalo or this drive, but also for the Green Bay Packers. They're, they're a half game back now with Philadelphia winning in that laugher against Dallas yesterday, and they in Tampa. And, and I firmly believe whoever wins home field in the NFC is going to be the Super Bowl representative because the chances of going to Tampa or to Philly or goodness knows coming here and winning playoff games is going to be darn near close to impossible because of the quality of all three of those teams. We need some help. Second down and 10. Nothing caught yet by Eric Moulds. And that goes again to the tight end, the former Tampa Bay Buck, Dave Moore. And he makes his 16th reception of the season. He picks up seven. He's just beyond the 40-yard line. Yeah, and there's a guy sitting on the Green Bay sideline wearing number four, doesn't have his helmet off, or has his helmet off, just sitting here watching third down, saying, please let me on the field. Because it's kind of his time of the football game. And Drew Bledsoe and this Bills offense have to make sure that Brett Favre and that Packer offense stay right where they are on the sideline. Number one goal is keep the, keep the ball, Kevin. Number two goal is get points. Buffalo today, interception, fumble, both in Green Bay territory, and punt, punt. Outside the 43rd and three, and Bledsoe wants to talk it over as he burns his first time out. With 2.57 to play in the second quarter. Old Chad on the sideline. The holiday season is a time for cherishing family and friends. This year, take a moment and think about those less fortunate than yourself. Then, do something to help. Donate clothing to the needy. Food to the hungry. Give to the charity of your choice. Give of yourself. Happy Holidays from all of us at CBS. Happy, Happy Holidays. Happy Holidays. Happy Holidays. Happy Holidays. <laughs> Coming up, the next Tell Halftime report from New York. Jim, Dan, Dion, and Boomer have scores and highlights. Next Tell Halftime on deck. Big news, of course, leading off the pregame show today. Bill Parcells, Jerry Jones talking about a possible Dallas Cowboy GM or head coaching job. Well, no surprise there if you follow, follow Parcells' history. <laughs> Tried to and Dion. get Dion coming yeah. back to the Raiders. Also no surprise there. After the Buffalo timeout third along three outside the Bills 40. Here comes Baja Villamilla. The first Green Bay sack today. 
and his 12th of the season, which is in the top five in the National Football League. And the Packers' defense holds the Buffalo Bills. And now they got a punt. Now the tackle, Jonas Jennings, you want to keep your shoulders like this, okay? You don't want them to get like this. Watch those shoulders spin immediately perpendicular to the line of scrimmage. Bang, you're dead. You're giving up the corner, and you're giving up a sack. And Brett Favre in the Packer offense gets the ball back. Second consecutive three and out for the Buffalo Bills. Third consecutive punt coming up. High snap. J.J. Moses is back. At the 25. Wow. Coy Wire was down there. The rookie out of Stanford, the starting safety, belts a 42-yard punt, 8-yard return. Well, tonight on 60 Minutes, have you any idea where the medicine you're taking came from? That it might even be a counterfeit. Curious? Try watching 60 Minutes tonight here on CBS. Nothing counterfeit about the feeling you get when you come to Green Bay. Nor the cold. <laughs> it's chill. You know, college football has <laughs> Notre Dame and that stadium. Baseball, Major League Baseball has Yankee Stadium. One time in your life, if you're a football fan, you have got to come here to Lambeau Field and see a football game played here. This is this is just the real deal. This is it. On the 34, first and 10, he goes outside, caught by Terry Glenn. First out of bounds by Fletcher, has a first down, up to the Packer 46, it's a gain of 12. And if you are a football fan and you want to make that one trip, do it soon, because you want to do it while Brett Favre is still playing quarterback for the Green Bay Packers, because he can do it as well as anybody has ever done it. And I played with a guy that I didn't think I'd see anybody in 10, 15, 20 years that played with the poise and control that Joe Montana did. But Brett Favre has, I think, better skills than most people that have played the position and has all the poise and control of anybody I played with. And he had a lot to live up to in Bart Starr, who won the Super Bowls here and was a coach here for the Packers. But there's a reason Brett Favre is voted the best player in Green Bay history by the fans. He is. We've reached the two-minute warning with the Packers on top 3-0. Christmas Day. Celebrate the holidays with family and friends and everybody's favorite, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Only on CBS Christmas Day. It's the next Nextel Halftime Report with Jim, Dan, Deanne, and Boomer, all from New York, and all scores and highlights coming your way. The next Nextel Halftime next here on CBS. And there's exactly why Greg Williams was so worried about Brett Favre and that Packer offense at the end of the first half. First and ten, Amon Green, grabbed by Ahanatu from behind, picks up four, and he's up near midfield. Yeah, Chidi Ahanatu, yeah, he's got a history with Green Bay. Played with St. Louis, played him in the playoffs down there in, in St. Louis when those Rams had the high-powered offense, and with Tampa Bay, he knows exactly what he faces with his Brett Favre offense. Packers have three timeouts, second down and six from the 50. Five fires a pass, and it's caught by Robert Ferguson. It's a gain of 11, sliding in front of Clemens. He's down to the Buffalo 39. That's his first catch today. Now, there's a great example of, I'm going to throw it to you in the second window. First window's just past the corner. Second window's just past the safety. He fired that right in the second window. First and 10 from the 39, five outside. Caught by Driver. He was caught by Thomas, who picked off Favre earlier in the game. It's a gain of two. Clock continues to go. Plenty of time. Absolute ages. Now a timeout. <laughs> Green Bay's got two. Buffalo has two. Packers lead on a 33-yard field goal. This is Reuben Brown of the Buffalo Bills. Reuben helps the United Way build stronger communities by participating in after-school recreational outings that help kids succeed. To all of his fans, Reuben's a hero. To some of his fans, Reuben's a hero. Next Sunday at 5 Eastern, check out a cutting-edge challenge featuring the world's hottest freestylers, including Olympic gold medalist Johnny Mosley and Tanner Hall, and many more at the Paul Mitchell Ultimate Bumps and Jumps here on CBS. This drive so far, Kevin, brought far three of three to three different receivers. After the timeout, second down nine from the 38. Throws the dart. It's driver grabbed from behind. 
by Winfield. It's a gain of six to the Buffalo 32. Shy of a first down by a couple. They tried the blitz there. Nice pickup by the Green Bay Packers line. And good anticipation and breaking off the route by Donald Driver to be right where Brett Favre needed him to be. Packers have two timeouts. Third down and a three from the 32. Far chased by Edwards. Finds room downfield deep to Ferguson. Incomplete covered by Thomas. No yellow on the field. No flag out there. It'll be now fourth and three for Green Bay. The two timeouts remain. What do you do? Do you try for a field goal in this wind? Well, you can't kick it. You can't kick a field goal this far in this wind. And nice coverage. And right now, Greg Williams and everybody on that Buffalo sideline and back home in Buffalo watching this game, rooting for their Bills, can start breathing again. Because that was nice defensive positioning. And Mike Sherman's offense gave it a shot. But you can't kick here. You've got to try to pick up this first down. Long runs, long as this year, 49. So they're going to go for it on fourth and three inside the Buffalo 33. Well, I've got a block from Amon Green, one off his receiver, Glenn, and Green Bay will turn it over on downs, and the Buffalo Bills, and just alluded to it, have escaped a major sledgehammer. And right there was an unforced error. You know, I hate to bring up a, a tennis analogy here, but, you know, that was just purely straight into the net by Brett Farm. Because he gets the snap, he comes right, and the ball is going to be right on the money. Or how about right there at Glenn's feet? And, you know, it's one of the things. You got one of the great gunslingers at quarterback. Sometimes you hit a blank. And Brett Favre there hit a blank. So Green Bay losing it on downs for the first time. Those are some of his numbers. The interception by Thomas. And Buffalo now is going to be with the ball. 32-yard line. Two timeouts. And Bledsoe gets a block from centers and goes downfield. Intercepted by Diggs. It's the second interception thrown by Bledsoe, the third Buffalo turnover today. And for Diggs, his second pick this season. In, in this circumstance, I was very surprised, to be honest with you, Kevin, that you're down there slinging the ball in a dangerous part of the field. Throwing outside where things are safe, I could see it. But here in the middle of the field, where your problem is, I don't understand why you throw the ball here and give this offense a chance to get back on the field. Trying to get it inside the peerless prize who they've had just blanketed all day. That was a bad decision and a bad throw. Packers trying to cash in at the Buffalo 45. First and 10. Far. Runs and throws downfield. Dropped by Glenn. And about the 21. Packers have two timeouts. 18 first half seconds remaining. Three drops by Packer. Receivers today. It'll be second down. A kind of half smile on Brett Favre's face. He kind of, you know, I did my part. You know, there was about a shoebox size window to put that ball in, and I got it to that spot. I think it just kind of moved a little bit on Terry Glenn. It was actually very, very nice coverage. But that ball was just placed exactly where it had to be. Glenn couldn't adjust his body. Four receivers, platoon, second down and 10. Packers at the Buffalo 45. Come on, Green at Favre's side. And goes to the aforementioned Green, working on Winfield and belted on the play by Coy Wire. And time now at 10 seconds. Green Bay burns their second timeout to gain a six on the play to the Buffalo 34. I watched the kickers before the game kicking in this direction. From about 40 yards back, that ball hits about goal line and starts dying in the air. I, I think 40 yards is the maximum field goal you can try in this direction. Right now it's about 52 yards. And you've got to move this ball probably another 13, 14 yards down the field to get to a 40-yard field goal. And you've got to do it on the outside of the field. And if you're going to move this ball in this situation, I think you've got to get the ball to Donald Driver. Long wells, long boot of the season. 49 yards, and he has hit 16 of his last 17 overall. We mentioned when he hit that 33-yarder earlier in the game, 16 straight here in Lambeau. It is first and 10, the Packers at Favre and the gun from the 35. Timeout Buffalo, and they've now got one left. And London Fletcher, it's one of the values of having a veteran like Fletcher in there. He didn't like the defense. Didn't like the personnel. He knew there was something wrong, and he called the timeout. That's a smart move. 
by the Buffalo middle linebacker. You know, here in Wisconsin, talk of Brett Favre and how long he'll play constantly coming up, and he's always asked about it, and he was asked by you that same question yesterday. And I, mainly because did you? I asked him, did you regret ever bringing the subject up because now everybody nails you on it? And he said, no, it's, you know, I watch the tape. People don't understand, it's not anything besides my decision on how I see I'm playing. And I can really associate with what he's saying because that's the reason I quit. You know, I was on a Super Bowl team. I didn't have to walk away. My you, line was Bobby Kittry. A, a play or a practice play. or a you, you watch the games. Game. You're not playing like you used to. You're not doing the things you used to be able to. And he says he's starting to notice that. And when he knows it, notices it too much, that's when he's going to quit. First and ten. One timeout for the Packers. 35-yard line. Five. No mind green. Incomplete. They wave it off. Incomplete pass. Second down and ten. The clock at five seconds. What do you do? What do I, you do? I think you throw it into the end zone and hope you get a, a tip pass and your guy catches it. He's shaking his head. There's I, not I, a I'm chance. I'm assuming, yeah, I, I can't hit it from, with this wind. There's no way I'm going to hit it. No. Not with both legs. <laughs> <laughs> now that, I'd pay to see that. <laughs> I'd pay to see that. It'd be a 52-yarder at least, maybe 53 if you lined up far enough back into this wind. And there's not a chance in the world. You know, not even Gary Anderson hit that great kick on CBS yesterday How for Minnesota that? to beat Miami and set up this mess in the AFC playoff wise. <laughs> you see the Big Ben formation, all the receivers bottom of the screen. Here they go. And Favre winds and throws down the side, caught by Glenn. Hit so hard by Winfield, his helmet came off. Incomplete, they say. Caught out of bounds. No time remains. And again, the Buffalo Bills defense holds Favre, Glenn. And the Packer offense. That was a major league NFL whack. It knocked his chin strap pad off. Hey, for Greg Williams and the Buffalo Bills, they wanted to prevent the fast start. They wanted to prevent the late score. They did both. To Beasley Reese on the field. All right, thanks a lot, guys. I'm with Coach Williams. And Coach, just talk about that first half. You talked about avoiding a fast start by the Packers and then something at the half. You did them both. We did them both, and then we're playing with our backs against the wall on defense. We've got a couple of turnovers. We get some rhythm on offense. We'll be fine. We've got to come out and win this second half, and we've got to establish our offense and get things moving. Thank you, Coach. Buffalo Bills still alive in the AFC playoff race. Green Bay trying for home field. Vital game, playoff implications. We'll take you to New York after this for the next Tell Halftime Report. After this, message and a word from your local station. Monday's got you down. Monday, Monday. Let CBS pick you up with America's funniest night of television. The King of Queens. Yeah. Yes, dear. Everybody loves Raymond. Hey! And still standing. Let the adoring begin. Monday, Monday. Ah! Got a day. Oh, people sound like maniacs. It's here to stay. Yeah! Don't miss CBS Monday. It's all here. Monday night. CBS Sports presents the Nextel Halftime Report. Nextel, bringing you wireless solutions. As we welcome you to the Nextel Halftime Report. Hello there, everybody. Welcome to our studios here in New York. A little melancholy feeling here. Could be one of Dion's last halftimes here on the Nextel Halftime Report. Dan, oh, Dion, and Boomer on the side. Raider story still brewing. Let's get everybody up to date around the league. These two high-powered teams. Only a field goal in the first half at Lambeau Field there, Mr. Marino. These two gunslingers combined for what? Less than 100 yards, Brett Favre. Less than 50 for Drew Bledsoe. And, and some interceptions. And you see an interception right here. Brett Favre with that strong arm tries to fit it in sometimes. Gets picked off by Kevin Thomas who proceeds down the sideline. Putting the... Buffalo Bills inside the 10. Drew Bledsoe right here returns the favor. This has been a problem for Drew Bledsoe all year. Darren Sharper picking it off. Watch the hit right on his knee. Oh, and he lays there for a while afterwards. And then Brett Favre back to pass. Steps up in the pocket. Aaron Schobel in for the sack. And this is a, an extremely boring football game with two <laughs> great quarterbacks. Yes, it is. Wow. And I earned their yards. 64. That's it. Elsewhere, San Diego and Kansas City, and the Chiefs without Priest Holmes today, up 14-6. Trent Green with a pair of touchdown tosses in Ellen. Yeah, Trent Green is really actually playing very well. San Diego gets back on the board right at the end of the first half. There is Priest Holmes wearing his leather jacket. They'd rather see him in a red Kansas City jersey. But how about this? Check out the strength of Tony Gonzalez. What a nice catch on the sideline. 
breaks three tackles. This is why he is the preeminent tight end in the AFC. Gains 18 yards down the sideline. That's a Maryland yep. word. There you go. I know. Here you go. How about this? Trent Green. Look at the poise. Just sit, 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 sit and wait. Mark Bowricker in the back of the end zone. Eight yard touchdown pass. And then he throws it to Omar who? Oh my ease! All he does is catch touchdowns. That's his first catch ever in his career for a touchdown. <laughs> Making it, it look so. easy. Yes, it is. Tennessee and Jacksonville. The Titans making it look easy. A pair of Eddie George touchdowns. They're on to the third quarter down there in Jacksonville. It's been all Titans so far. As Jacksonville has no running game to this point and only four first downs. You think Santa Claus is coming to town? Eddie George is coming to a touchdown near you. Eddie George runs over one and here's another one. Putting the Titans up seven to nothing. Coach Fisher smiling on this one. When Steve McNair can't find anyone to throw Boomer, what does he do? He rolls out. Rolls out. I like that. You like Ludacris. <laughs> you know who it is? You know about Ludacris. You've been driving around in the hood. 26 yards on the run. Then Eddie George <laughs> barrels up the middle for a one yard touchdown. His second of the day. You are so proud of yourself. I am. You? I got that. You one. are really Pretty good. Yeah. How about the Giants? Well, the Colts get on the board here right before the half. The Giants, Tiki Barber getting in the end zone, leading it there, 10-3. Critical game on each side there. Giants also need some help now to make the playoffs, watching Atlanta and New Orleans very closely. Texans up at Washington and the Redskins. Darius Thompson. Dion, you knew this guy back uh, when he was on the Redskins practice squad. Patrick Ramsey has found him. In fact, Ramsey's thrown for two touchdowns. Ramsey's found them twice in Washington, the little Dell. Bet. I bet you he just ran for 24 yards on that carry right there. Now Washington's Patrick Ramsey hooks up with my old scout team partner, Darius Thompson, 28 yards on the game. Then Patrick Ramsey hits a wide open Rock Cartwright. What is this, Bonanza? Rock Cartwright? Who is Rock Cartwright? <laughs> but during the punt, Houston's Billy Miller is called for holding and pulls down Ladarius Jackson in the end zone, which is automatically results in a safety. Now my man again. I used to rough this guy up. Now he's rough in secondaries up. Darius Thompson goes in again for a second touchdown, putting the Redskins up 16 to 3. All right, elsewhere in New Orleans playing at Cincinnati, and Dylan has good numbers on the McAllister side. 14 carries, 21 yards. That's it. But there's Dante Stallworth. He caught a long one for a touchdown, 57 yarder to give him the lead. And Atlanta now on the board with a touchdown pass from Vic as the Lions could be on their way to back to back winless road seasons. Marty Morningwig 0 and 8 last year on the road, and if they fall here today, 0 and 8 yet again. Chicago down. They've got Burris in at quarterback Chandler out with an injury, and Carolina leading here as D Brown has a couple of touchdowns on the ground for Carolina. This is a doubleheader day on CBS, and the big one for most of you: Denver and Oakland. Some will see Cleveland against Baltimore, and again, if you are with us on the NFL today, Dion dropping the little nugget on us that he is considering seriously a contract offer to join the Raiders, perhaps as early as this week for their postseason drive. They're injured in the secondary. Yes, they are, and uh, this is a serious issue. But you know, I, I I miss you guys, and I don't know if you guys can replace me. I want go, you to you know, know. Seriously, I want you to know. We already have a lot of people sending in resumes. Some people want to pinch hit for you. Already? Yeah. In fact, uh, there's one guy here right now. Come on up here. My friend, how are you? Here's yes. my resume right here. You got to be kidding Thank me. Thank you, Mr. Rodriguez. You yeah. have some experience in Seattle and. Texas Rangers. <laughs> yeah. okay. you, you just said only on the weekends, right? Only on the weekends. And all right. We'll call you if we need you. Hey, Thank you. Thank you very can much. you hit a curveball? Yeah. That's all I want to know. I tell you what, you will you not can. get him up under the salary cap. <laughs> he can I'll hit you. That. He can hit blind. You won't get him up under the salary yeah. cap. Next, thanks for being with us on the next Dell Halftime hey, Report. <laughs> CBA Sports presents the Next Dell Halftime Report. Next Dell, bringing you wireless solutions.